After my deep Q learning video, some of you have expressed interest in seeing how to modify the code and use it for mountain car. That is exactly what we're going to do today. If you haven't seen my Q learning video on mountain car, definitely check that out first. And if you haven't seen my deep Q learning video on frozen lake, it would be very helpful if you watch that one as well. Quick reminder that my code is in GitHub. It's in the gym solutions folder. Let's start with my diagram from my deep Q learning video and see what we need to change to make it work for mountain car. For mountain car, we're given two pieces of information. We're given the position of the car along the X axis, and it's a value between negative 1.2 and 0 0.6. We're also given the velocity of the car. It's a value between negative 0.07 and 0 0.07. The actions that the car can take, it's either accelerate to the left, accelerate to the right, or do nothing. Let's map the observation space and action space to our DeepQ network. Let's start with the action space. The output of the network represents our action space. So since there are three actions, the action is going to be three nodes. For the input, we're given position and velocity. So those are the two nodes that we're going to use. Q-learning can't handle continuous space, which means that there could be infinite number of states. The same applies to deep Q-learning. Deep Q-learning can't handle continuous space either. What we did in the mountain car Q-learning video is to convert the continuous space into a discrete space. And the way that we did that was to slice this range into 20 divisions. So any number that lies between negative 1.2 and whatever this arbitrary slice is, is going to be mapped to position 0. We do the same thing to velocity, just chop up this range and convert it into an integer. Now the inputs to the neural network will simply be a combination of two integers. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 2, etc. Okay, those are the differences. The rest of the algorithm stays the same. Let's jump to the code and see how it works. This is the code that I use in my DeepQ learning video. I made a copy of that for mountain car. Let me open this up. Most of the code is the same. If you want to know the difference, hold control, select the two, right click, and do a file compare, and you can walk through the differences. I'll just go over the notable changes. The DQN, replay memory, those stay the same. The learning rate changed. The network sync rate, replay memory, those things change. The network sync rate, I bumped it up by a lot. After 50,000 steps, we're syncing the target network with the policy network. So I increased it because for mountain car, it needs a significantly more number of actions than the frozen lake environment. For that same reason, we need to store a lot more experiences than before. The batch I kept the same. Here's the number of divisions, which is the number of segments to divide the position and velocity into. 20 is an arbitrary number. You can try more or less. And you should recognize this code from the mountain car Q learning video. The, this is just code to, to create the segments. This is our main training loop where we go through number of defined episodes. Similar to the Q learning video, I'm also capping the uh, training episode to 1000 steps. This is also something you can adjust. The loop pretty much stays the same. Let's jump to the function that converts the state into an input for the neural network. All this does is to convert the position and velocity floats into integers. So wherever those floats land, that's the integer that's getting returned. Another big change is the way I'm graphing the progress. Here I'm accumulating the number of rewards received per episode and appending it to our list. Every 1000 episodes, I'm plotting the progress. Let me jump down to the plot function. So it's just creating a plot of the rewards per episode and the epsilon history. This way we can visualize how the training is going without waiting to the end. Another thing to note is that if the rewards that we've collected is really good, best reward was defined up here, minus 200. If we can get to the goal in 200 actions or better, save the policy right there. At that point, I can stop the training manually and just keep that policy 
or I can keep letting it train and see if it can beat itself and then save another model. Okay, so those are the notable changes. Let's start training and see what it looks like. After the first thousand episode, we should get a PNG file here, mountaincar.png, that will graph the progress of the training. Okay, we get the graph here after 1000 episodes. Let me open it up. So in the first thousand episodes, we have not found a solution. Also, there's nothing showing up on the Epsilon side yet. Until the agent gets to the goal at least once, we're not going to start decreasing Epsilon yet. So nothing is showing up on the graph. Here's the graph updated at episode 2000. We can see that Epsilon has decreased. We can see that on the graph as well. Looks like it's able to reach the goal in maybe in 930 actions. Okay, I'm going to let this train and then we'll review the progress. All right, we're back. We're at episode 9000 and looks like Epsilon is around 0.6 something, around 7000 episodes. The agent is able to reach the goal in maybe around 250 actions, but it's still not within the target of under minus 200. So let's give it some time and we'll come back. Finally, at 12,000 episodes, we can see that the agent is able to reach the goal in 178 actions, which means we met the threshold of 200. At episode 15,000, we can see that the agent improved just a little bit from 178 actions down to a 172. Let's see if it can get any better. At 17,000 episodes, we got a pretty good bump from 172 down to 145. I did let the training finish and 145 was the best result. So that's pretty good. After training for 20,000 episodes, we have our best solution at 17,000 episodes. So the way I named the policy was to tag on the episode at the end here. I'm going to comment out the training, the call to the training code, and comment the test code. I'll pass in the policy that we want to run. Let's run it. Okay, we can see the mountain car getting up to the goal. Now I want to mention that there are some starting states where the mountain car is just stuck. Let's see if it happens. Okay, so, so you see here that it's stuck in this particular location. Maybe dividing into 20 segments is not enough granularity. Trying more segments might work better. Uh, also, maybe changing some other hyperparameters might make the model more solid. But at this point, I'm pretty satisfied with what we have. That is it for this video. If you want to support my channel, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you.